This is Talk Radio across the UK, online, on DAB Plus, and on your smart speaker. Claudia Liza on Talk Radio. Let's take a look at tomorrow morning's uh, front page. Is joining me now is Tom Spencer, chief organiser of the London New Liberals and political commentator. Uh, Tom, good to have you. Uh, you know, I, I suspected that there was going to be a mixed bag with front of the front pages uh, tomorrow morning because there's just no real lead story, right? However. Uh, the story that only one, it looks like only one paper was able to, to manage to get it before before it went to print. Uh, the Queen being sent to hospital. We only got news of this just a few few minutes ago. I don't know how the Mirror got it on the, the front page so quickly. Mm, it's, it's always an extremely worrying thing to hear that the Queen isn't in uh, perfect health. And I think recently we have seen her have to cancel her trip to uh, Northern Ireland as well as um, walking... Uh, uh, with a cane for, for the first time but i do think it's worth uh, remembering she is a 95 year old uh person it's quite normal for people of that age to be in and out of hospital quite Check regularly yeah. and, and until we hear more i don't think we should uh, speculate too much. No, uh, indeed. Uh, Buckingham Palace said, you know, nothing to worry about, just preliminary investigations. However, definitely more details after that cancellation of that Northern Ireland uh, trip. However, uh, a story that is uh, more common uh, than other stories right now on the front pages tomorrow morning is the booster jab, the Pfizer booster jab, getting more details as to how effective um, it is. Uh, the, the headline on the Times, a booster dose for Pfizer vaccine offers near total protection. Could this be a game changer? Mm, uh, this is incredibly um, exciting, uh, uh, really, because we've not properly committed to the uh, booster jab. If you look at daily uh, vaccination numbers, they're still very, very low. And the fact that we now know it is incredibly effective implies that should give the government the added push to try and jab even more and more. So we do... Um, hopefully uh, deny the uh, winter lockdowns or the plan B that people are currently um, predicting. Indeed, do you think uh, this could lead to the government even pushing further on people taking the booster jab? But you know, already we had Sajid Javid come out to say, look, if you don't want to go into plan B, you guys go out there, make sure you've got vaccinated, particularly make sure that you do get that booster jab. However, they didn't really make noise about it until until Sajid Javid and that, that uh, press briefing. Uh, yeah, it, it, it seems the government are currently signalling that they're going to move down from a six-month requirement to a five-month uh, uh, requirement from your, your second jab uh, to your third one. So that is it's definitely a sign they're looking to get as many people as possible to have uh, the booster. So it implies the government are definitely take on the right line with this one. So hopefully they will go through uh, with it so as many people get the booster as uh, possible. On the front pages of the Daily Mail and the Guardian, often they have uh, the same story on the front page, but uh, tomorrow morning they do. Uh, Laura Koonsberg, is she potentially in talks to, to step down as, as, as the BBC's political editor? Uh, the headline on the Daily Mail is Laura switching off TV. And the Guardian's headline is making news Koonsberg in talks to step down from BBC role. That, this is quite unexpected. Mm, it, it's something I hadn't heard anything about since um until i flipped through the papers about an hour ago but i think laura kinsberg since she's been in her role have been quite a, a controversial uh figure i think many on the left view her as a bit of a pro-tory uh political editor so it, it will be quite interesting to see if she does you're saying down. laura kinsberg is pro-tory uh, no, it's, it, I think she's actually rather good, but I have heard many on the left be quite upset with um, lots of her sort of um, friendships well, and it's uh, been, yeah, it's commentary. Been controversial times right i think she's been political editor during during mm. brexit during two elections obviously during uh, the covid pandemic so it has been would could you argue it's been a very difficult time to to work in politics given you know all the things i've just mentioned mm, yeah I, I think to be political editor of uh, the BBC is probably one of the hardest jobs in uh, journalism to have because although you need to maintain friendships to be able to get stories and to challenge people and get access to them it's very hard to do that as well as staying uh, fiercely independent and I think she's done a pretty good job at that mm -hmm. because although it will always be a Herculean task to me she stayed pretty independent most of the time which I know most people wouldn't be able uh, to do. 
no to, to me to me as well i have to say i can't get i can't figure her out at all in terms of which way she leans however uh, rumor has it that she could be heading for uh, for the Today programme on BBC Radio 4, uh, obviously. And this is, this is quite common, right? You've seen uh, political editors move on to, to either getting their own dedicated show. Gosh, Andrew Marr, that happened with Andrew Marr. Oh, gosh, he's a guy on, on, on uh, Today as well. Oh, my gosh, Robinson. Nick Robinson. Oh, my gosh, my, my brain, mm. old age. Uh, Nick Robinson, of course, he was a political editor, although he did have been moved because of, 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 a, of cancer. But, yeah, it's very, very common. Political editors move on to, to, get, their own, to get their own show or, or bigger show. Mm. Uh, yeah that, that's one of the best things i think about the bbc is that they do mm. manage to when they have t talent they tend to keep it yeah. so although there are some very uh, notable exceptions to that where people have um switched sides mm. onto uh, broadcasters i i think it's always good when you have very talented broadcasters um like laura to keep them within the bbc somewhere yeah. simply for the quality of the BBC. Yeah, also rumour has it, uh, Tom, it's it, now's a good time to get in a new political editor to, to bed in, if you like, ahead of any election in the next few years. Uh, let's move to the eye, shall we? Uh, the headline there, this is a very, very different headline to all the other papers, Missing Vaccines Minister. Hmm. Uh, they're saying new minister for vaccines and public health has made zero national media appearances in the six weeks since getting the job. That's a big deal, it okay. seems. Um, it's, it's something which I think immediately sounds like a big deal, but when you think about it, she'd just come into a very, very important uh, portfolio uh, and sh she simply might not have any major news stories regarding the uh, vaccine to, to break. If she's simply doing everything very effectively uh, behind closed doors, which I think there is still more to be done on vaccines and we do need to be pushing the booster more. But if there's no demand for a big national press conference, I don't think we should necessarily be jumping to a big front page headline. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and the eye as well. I find this um, it seems more like a Daily Mail headline, right? Because, yeah, look, read a little bit further into it. They're comparing her to her predecessor. Uh, Nadim Zahari is obviously now Education Secretary. Uh, but yeah, they say her predecessor, uh, Nadim Zahari, uh, was a popular, trusted communicator who used regular TV appearances to drive home the vaccination message. Is, is, is this headline news? I simply don't think it is. The reason her predecessor was on TV so much is when he was running the uh, vaccine rollout, the vaccine was a much larger uh, political issue. Since she's come in, we've had a reshuffle, we've had COP, we've had plenty of other really, really big news stories. And it makes sense that the news simply isn't focusing on vaccines as much when there's so many more crises coming into place. So without the news focusing on vaccine, why should she waste her time on a press conference. Well, which... yeah. Well, actually, now we've got uh, this uh, potential news that the uh, the booster dose of Pfizer of the Pfizer vaccine offers near total protection. Maybe we might be seeing more of this uh, um, new minister or this new vaccines minister. Gosh, I didn't even uh, read out her name. Maggie Throop. Here we go. I actually didn't even realise that she was a replacement for Nadine Zahawi. But yes, uh, Maggie Throop, we haven't seen her. Watch this space, though, as we focus on the booster jab. Uh, we could see a lot more of her. Really quickly, uh, Joe Biden. Uh, on the front page of the Ed of the Independent, has Biden lost his climate credibility? Where, where are they getting that from, Tom? Um, I'm not quite sure where they're coming at this story from. So we're yet to see anything from COP simply because the progress hasn't been made yet because it's not happened. Mm. Um, but if you look at what Biden's pushing for in the um, in the infra infrastructure bill, which is currently going through. Um, through Congress, um, he's pushing very hard for his um, new green plan, which um, if the infrastructure bill goes past, that will be a massive thing in right. um, helping the uh, United States reach okay. uh, net zero. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't... Tom Spencer, really good talking to you. Uh, 